There's a new Edgar Wright movie coming out next week. I'm really excited about it, as I'm sure a lot of you are. He's one of my favorite directors, if not my absolute favorite. So today, I want you to sit back while I tell you the story about the time that he kind of saved my filmmaking career. Let's go. This story begins in 2009 during my senior year at Oberlin College, when I realized that I had no idea what I was going to do after I graduated. I knew I wanted to keep making movies since that's all I'd done since I was like 15, but it's not like you can just go apply for film director jobs on LinkedIn. And I also knew that I didn't want to do the classic path of going to LA and spending years getting people coffee in the hope that eventually someone will read your screenplay. I just wanted to be able to keep making stuff independently. And also, I was terrified of the real world and student loans and health insurance. So I decided to apply to grad school. Something important I should mention is that applying to grad school solely as a means of staving off adulthood is really, really dumb, and you should not do it. But I did. And I was arrogant about it. I decided I would only apply to the three best film MFA programs in the country. So that was NYU, USC, and Columbia. Skip ahead to spring 2010, my last semester of college, and I was deep in production on my thesis film, which did not turn out to be a career-launching masterpiece. I didn't get into NYU, I didn't get into USC, but I did make it to the interview round at Columbia, which was the one that was by far my favorite. I would much rather go to New York than LA, and in my experience, Columbia film students are not as insufferable as NYU film students. So I flew out to Columbia, had an interview I was pretty sure I nailed, then finished my senior year of college and graduated. And got waitlisted at Columbia. So I did what any college graduate with no clue what to do next does. I moved home and got a retail job. And so for the rest of that year, I just kinda hung out, trying to figure out how to proceed. And by November, I hadn't had any good ideas, so I just applied to film school again. Let me reiterate, do not apply to grad school just because you aren't sure what else to do. Immediately after applying, I realized that I didn't actually want to go, but hey, why not see what happens? And once again, I got rejected from NYU, rejected from USC, and made it to the interview round at Columbia. But for now, let's jump back in time and talk about Edgar Wright. In 2004, when I was 16 and really getting into filmmaking, I convinced my mom to drive us 45 minutes to see this British movie that had gotten really good reviews called Shaun of the Dead. It was a revelation. It was the exact movie I needed at that point in my life. It somehow totally synthesized all my interests and sensibilities and my sense of humor and built it on this foundation of rock-solid storytelling and character work. The hyperkinetic filmmaking was apparent enough that even me as a novice could recognize the craft on display, and most importantly, it showed me that comedies could be visually dynamic. So the following week, I got my friend who had a car to drive us back so he could see it and because I needed to see it again. And immediately I started ripping it off in my own work. I would quote lines from it in my scripts, and it began a long obsession with whip pans and smash zooms, to the extent that in college I made a movie literally called Whip Smash. <laughs> Then, in my freshman year of college, when I was getting hyped as hell for Hot Fuzz, I discovered that years earlier, Edgar Wright had directed a TV show called Spaced. And at the time, it wasn't available in the US, so it was the first thing I ever torrented. But don't worry, the following year, I bought the DVD set the day it was released. This might sound like hyperbole, but I had never connected as deeply with a show until I saw Spaced. This was still the days before nerd culture had become mainstream, and it felt like I had discovered this secret show made exclusively for me. And then I saw Hot Fuzz and became obsessed with it, and then I learned Edgar Wright was directing an adaptation of Scott Pilgrim, one of my all-time favorite comics, and going into that theater in 2010, I'm not sure I've ever been as hyped for a movie in my life. And I saw it six times in theaters, so it's safe to say that I was in... <sighs> so now that I've covered that, let's go back to Columbia University. In 2011, on the worst day of the year to be in New York City, I went down for my second interview in two years at Columbia. In the interview, they asked me to talk about a movie I'd recently thought was great, so obviously, I talked about Scott Pilgrim. When I got home, feeling pretty good about how things went, I opened Twitter and shot off a tweet. And then a few minutes later, a couple DMs popped into my inbox. This blew my mind. 
As small a gesture as it was on Edgar's part, getting that encouraging message from my favorite director meant the world to me. So let's skip ahead a month. Even though I wasn't really anxious to go to film school, I desperately wanted the validation of getting accepted. I was totally stagnant at the time, and I had this vague idea that this would somehow provide some kind of direction. And I was feeling pretty confident, because if I got waitlisted the previous year, surely that meant this year I would get in. I didn't get in. I didn't even get waitlisted this time. This time, just straight up rejected. It was disappointing. Okay, that's obviously a big understatement. This was crushing. And I realized it's kind of silly because A, I didn't even really want to go, and B, I was sad because I didn't get into an Ivy League school. Like, how much more of a first world problem can you ask for? But the message I was getting was that I had regressed. I was worse than I had been a year earlier. And I had no idea what to do. So I locked myself in my room for the weekend and I watched the knife fight from the man from nowhere on a loop because I found it really cathartic to watch bad guys get fucked up with knives. I felt terrible. I was truly miserable. And then at some point on Sunday, I remembered the message that Edgar had sent. Edgar Wright, one of the best filmmakers working today, had been rejected from every film school he applied to, which was exactly what I was going through. And he got past it and did all right for himself, so maybe I could too. And that wasn't going to happen by sitting in my childhood bedroom feeling sorry for myself. The irony of it is that Edgar sent that message thinking I had gotten into film school when the opposite turned out to be true, so his message ended up being way more encouraging than he ever intended. By the end of the weekend, I realized that I had to get my shit together, so a few days later, I made my first YouTube video in which I brutally killed an anthropomorphic rejection letter. And a couple months after that, I launched this whole YouTube filmmaking endeavor. I never really got a chance to thank Edgar. I met him briefly once in 2013 at San Diego Comic-Con when I sort of stumbled into doing press covers of The World's End, but it would have been unprofessional to use my super brief interview to bring this up. So now, in the very slim chance that he sees this, Edgar, thank you for telling me exactly what I needed to hear. Six years later, it still really means a lot to me. I've got my tickets for the Baby Driver screening at BAM in Brooklyn next Tuesday, and I could not be more excited. That's all. Thanks. Bye.